How do we prove that any point on a perpendicular bisector of a line segment is equidistant from that segment's endpoints, also sometimes called the perpendicular bisector theorem? We'll be going through a proof of this theorem in today's Wrath of Math lesson. Here, I have written the theorem again for the sake of clarity. It says that if a point lies on a perpendicular bisector of a line segment, then the point is equidistant from the line segment's endpoints. So here in our generic sketch, we've got our point C on this perpendicular bisector. A perpendicular bisector is just a line, line segment, or ray that intersects another line segment at its midpoint and intersects the segment at a 90 degree angle. Then, since this is the midpoint of the line segment AB, by definition, the line segment AM is congruent to the line segment BM, since M is the middle of that segment. So this segment is congruent to this segment. So now we've sort of represented the conditions of the theorem. We have a point on a perpendicular bisector of a line segment. But notice in our drawing that the point on the perpendicular bisector is not on the line segment AB. This might not always be true, so let's quickly address the case when our point is on the line segment AB. If our point is both on the perpendicular bisector and it's on the line segment AB, then our point has to be the midpoint M, because that is where the perpendicular bisector and the line segment intersect. If our point is the midpoint, then by definition, it is equidistant from A and B. So that's just one case of the theorem out of the way, easily proven. Now moving on, we can assume that our point is not on the line segment AB. If you're watching this video, then you can probably prove this theorem on your own, so I definitely recommend trying that before watching the rest of this video. If you've tried and you're struggling, I'll give you a couple hints before we really get into the proof. What are we trying to prove? We're trying to prove that this point C is equidistant from A and B. What do those distances look like? Well, the distance between A and C is the length of this line segment here. Similarly, the distance between C and B is this line segment here. So we're trying to prove that these line segments are congruent. One way that we've often proved line segments are congruent is by proving that two triangles are congruent. And we have a lot of tools to do that, like the side angle side congruence postulate, for example. And that's why introducing triangles into a problem can often be useful. Here, since we know that our point C is not on the line segment AB, we know that this is a triangle. And so is this, and so is this. If we could prove that this triangle is congruent to this triangle, and that this side corresponds to this side, then we will have proven the theorem. So with this diagram and that information, try proving this theorem on your own. All right, now we're going to go through the rest of the proof, and there isn't much left. Between these two triangles, we already see that we have a pair of sides that are congruent. We also have a pair of angles that are congruent. So we're really close to being able to use the side angle side congruence postulate. We just need this side of this triangle to be congruent to this side of this triangle. And of course, wouldn't you know it, that is obviously true. This segment is congruent to itself by the reflexive property of congruence. So we have that this side of this triangle is congruent to this side of this triangle, and this side of this triangle is congruent to this side of this triangle, and these sides included angles are congruent as well. And that is all we need to be able to use side angle side. We have shown that triangle CMA is congruent to triangle CMB. We always want to pay close attention to make sure we name our congruent triangles properly. Since side CM is congruent to side CM and side MA is congruent to side MB, we know that this is an accurate labeling of these congruent triangles. And therefore, the side CA corresponds to the side CB. This side CA, this side CB. Therefore, those sides are congruent. 
because they are corresponding sides of two congruent triangles. We'll use these three lines to mark that. And that, my friends, is the conclusion we need to prove the theorem. Since the line segment CA is congruent to the line segment CB, we know that C is equidistant from the endpoints A and B. And therefore, in every possible case, whether this point is on the line segment or not, if a point lies on a perpendicular bisector of a line segment, then the point is equidistant from the line segment's endpoints. So I think that's pretty cool. That's how to prove this fairly intuitive fact. And this is definitely a useful theorem in many other proofs. Another interesting thing to note is that the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem is also true. The converse states that if a point is equidistant from a line segment's endpoints, then that point lies on a perpendicular bisector of the line segment. If you want to have some more fun, try to prove that as well. Let me know if you'd like me to do a lesson on it. I probably will do one fairly soon. And with that said, that is all I have for you today. So I hope this video helped you understand how to prove the perpendicular bisector theorem. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. And be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Link to his music in the description.